Mr. Anderson. I'm Mr. Sullivan. I hear you're interested in buying a house, eh? What you consider? So, what can you tell me about this place? Ah, uh, well, this is a rather lovely two-story home with three bedrooms, two full bathrooms, and one half bath. The style is a bit out of date, but it makes for a perfect fixer-upper, no? Oh. oh, nice. Is there anything else you can tell me about this house? You mean, like, the haunting? Well, yeah, that's why the price is so low. I'm not looking to spend a lot. Uh, I just want to know if it's just a reputation bring the cost down. Uh, there's not actually ghosts here. Oh, poppycock, my good sir, poppycock! Of course not! Ghosts are merely the overactive imaginations of poor, gullible cads. Anyway, please, allow me to give you a door! Follow me! Come! It's been an absolute pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Anderson. Here's the number for my office. Let us know when you come by so that my daughter will have the paperwork ready for you to sign. I will. Thanks. Sorry, man. I'm staying at Juniper's. He knows where you live. The worst he's going to do is play a Peter Gabriel song and beg. That's not going to work this time because of what he did last time. I just don't want you to get hurt again. And now that you're back in the city... I know, but I'm not going to let him back into my life. Plus, your house is creepy and in the middle of nowhere. If I get murdered at Juniper's, someone's going to hear me scream. Here, there's nothing but trees! Sure, but... Oh, hey, honey. I told you she was coming over, right? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, he's told me so much about you. <laughs> All good things, I hope. It's nice to finally meet you. It's a shame that we've never really gotten the chance to meet, though. Yeah, sure is a shame. Oh, Gabby, you should stay for dinner. We're gonna order out, but you can stay and get a chance to know Marilyn. Sure, I can stay for a bit. <laughs> Wonderful. Please, make yourself at home. Do you want any water? So Marilyn, uh, Stefan hasn't really told me too much about you. I'd love to get to know the person who's been putting up with him for the past eight months. Yeah, well, we've been living a pretty normal life. There's nothing much to say about it. So what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I'm a real estate agent. Oh, and how's that? It's fine. The boss can be a little bit strict sometimes. Yeah, that can be tough. So, what was life like for you growing up? It was alright. Um, my mom died when I was eight. Really the only bad part of it. I'm so sorry to hear that. That must have been really hard for you. Well, that's how life goes. You know, one day you're playing in the yard with her, and the next there's an accident. I mean, it doesn't even matter anyways. I barely knew her. So. Well, I'm starving, so why don't we order that dinner now? Sounds great. I'll walk you out. Steph, there's something wrong about Marilyn. What are you talking about? I'd, I'd, it's hard to explain, but there's just something not right with her. Wait, what? Like, you're the one to talk about bad partners. Brad was a real nice pick, Gaps. I know. Point taken. But, Steph, this is different. You know, there's just something, there's just something inherently wrong with her. I call it intuition, call it whatever you'd like, but I'm not lying and I don't think that I'm wrong. Whatever, Gabrielle. Good night. Honey, you seem a bit off. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I just, you just, nothing. Just, you never told me you're in the accident with your mom. Oh, I guess I didn't. Um, is that okay? Yeah, I'm just, just a little bit confused.
Hey, uh, uh, I need to go out of town for a little bit. Michael needs me, and, uh, I mean, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too long. Uh, so, yeah. Where are you going out of town? Uh, I'm just going to Timmins. I shouldn't be too long, though. I'll be back soon. I gotta go pack my bags. According to this list I obtained from the Ontario Environment Ministry, there are at least 16 major liquid ETB storage sites. Uh, yeah, I just need to go pick up Stefan. Wanna come? Yeah, sure, but, uh, I'm gonna go pick up Stefan. Yeah, sure, but, uh, can I drive, please? What, don't trust my driving skills? In this weather? No, I think it's best if I drive. Jeez, thanks for the vote of confidence, my god. That's what I'm here for. Don't be concerned, because they are... Okay, so we're here. Something wrong? It might be nothing. Honestly, okay, just just wait here. Just wait here a sec. I'll go get it. Stephen Anderson, he has 18 stab wounds to the chest and abdomen. Uh, the murder weapon has not been recovered, but we think it was a, a kitchen knife. Uh, his youngest sister and a friend found him after he sent a text to pick him up. Uh, the victim lived with his girlfriend, Marilyn Drummond, whose location is as yet unknown. 18 times, eh? What do you ask the sister to pick him up for? She says that the Vic's girlfriend was acting strange and that he wanted to get away from her. So the girlfriend was here when this all went down? We think so, detective. We've got a bolo out on her now. Is that the sister? Yes, sir. She and her friend have alibis for the time of death. GPS and a couple traffic cams caught him driving up at the time he would have been good. According to the ME, the Vic died pretty quick. From what she could tell, uh, the perp managed to sever his abdominal aorta on their first strike. He'd have bled to death in the seconds whether or not he was stabbed again. Would they have needed a medical background for that first one? Uh, they managed to avoid the rib cage, uh, and it was it was a clean cut. There was no hesitation. Uh, either the killer knew exactly what they were doing, or they just got lucky. That happens sometimes, Schmidt. Let me know when they apprehend the suspect. I'm gonna talk to the sister. Sorry for your loss, Miss Anderson. I just need to ask you a couple questions, if you don't mind. It was her. Who? Marilyn, she killed him. How do you know? I told him, I told him that there was something wrong with her. That, that he had to get away from her. But, she, she must have just killed him because she knew he was going to leave. Oh god. I never said anything. I listen, sweetheart, this ain't your fault. Even if she was the one who killed him, all you did was warn him of the danger. I. His blood ain't on your hands, I. You keep that in mind. Detective, can we talk for a sec? Perp just pulled up front. Uh, Jackson has her in a squad car. 
Uh, Jeff's and I are in a squad car, but they're about to take it downtown, so you can question her as soon as you know. Good evening, Miss Drummond. Um, I'm Detective Lang. I'm the lead investigator on the death of your boyfriend, Stephen. I just have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind my asking. Well, you already dragged me here, so I don't really have a choice now, do I? Well, in the event that that wasn't rhetorical, Miss Drummond, you do have the right to remain silent. It wasn't. Alright, now, where were you between the hours of, uh, 9.30 and 10.15? Well, I was at work finishing up some paperwork. Uh, my boss can give, I can give you my boss's contact information. He'll tell you that I was there. So, assuming that that checks out, do you have any idea who'd have done this? Well, he did say that he was having a fight with his sister earlier on. She has an alibi, Miss Revan. Can you think of anyone else? Oh, um... Couldn't. Who are you thinking of? Oh, it's nothing. It, it probably wasn't him. Well, I just think that I have an ex-boyfriend. Um, I broke up with him right after I got with Stefan. And, well, he's always been the jealous type. Why'd you break up if you don't mind my asking? Well, he always had anger issues, and near the end, it got worse. So, you know, I just ended it. You know, he always seemed like he wanted to hit me, so just before it got that bad, I left. Thanks for that. Now, assuming that your alibi checks out, we'll have an officer by to let, to let you out within a couple of hours. Thank you, ma'am. to the police her alibi checked out that's probably why they didn't hold her back it doesn't it, her alibi is obviously fake how did they fall for that anyway well we don't know what she said to the police right it doesn't matter what she said to them because whatever story she fed them is obviously a story like I, what are the odds that he would text me that i was right about marilyn and then immediately die! Oh, maybe he thought you were right about something else? No, no, no. We're just gonna have to find information on her, on our own. How are we supposed to do that? Oh my goodness, no, we're not trying to run into this. Please, please. All we need, all we need is just a little something to go off of. God. You know what? Fine. What's her name? Marilyn Drummond. I would have to text Iris, but it might take a few days, alright? Just chill out for now, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Do you, do you know what this is about? She'll usually just text us the info. 
I'm not sure, but we can try calling her later if you feel a bit better. We could get a bite right now if we'd like. Okay. Alright. Sounds like a solid plan. Let's go. Hey, Aris. It's uh, me and Gabby. Hey, Gabby. You okay? I heard you were attacked. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. So what you got? Well, I dug into the names of the person you gave me, Marilyn Drummond. And? On Marilyn Drummond, I found nothing. And I mean nothing at all. She's clean as a whistle. Hasn't had a parking ticket in over 20 years. Oh, really? There's nothing else? Well, not exactly, but that's not why I wanted to call. So what is it? Well, it's just that, are you sure you gave me the right name? Yeah, her name is Marilyn Drummond. Why? Well, according to the files I pulled, Marilyn Drummond would be 83 years old and, <laughs> yeah, six feet under the ground. Oh, wait, what? How's that even possible? You know what, just skip the dramatics please and get straight to the point. Yeah, and she's 27 and is definitely still alive. Okay, so, sorry, June. Um, according to police records, she's dead. I don't know who this girl is that you're dealing with, but as far as I'm concerned, Marilyn Drummond was an Oshawa resident who died, like, eight years ago. Oh my god. Yeah, just be careful, guys. I don't want to be driving to any of your funerals soon. Will do. Thanks for your help. Alright, no problem. Um, I've got to go, but keep me in the loop, okay? We'll do, Iris. We'll talk to you later. See ya. She stole this woman's ID... for what? And... Was killing him always part of the plan? It says here that Marilyn Drummond died at 75 from breast cancer at the Oshawa Hospital. What are you reading? I am reading the online obituary. Um, she had like three sons and two grandkids or something, none of which actually shared her name. So what, she stole some woman's identity? I don't know, I suppose so, but why would she need to change it to something else? Why would she need to change her ID? Uh, I don't know. Can, can you, can you try looking up? an accident that would have happened about 19 years ago. A mother and daughter would have been involved, but only the mom would have died. Do you have the date, or am I going to be searching up? Searching that it's like a wild goose chase. This is definitely a wild goose chase. Alright. <laughs> uh, let's see, right here. You know, with the number of people that die from car crashes and accidents, you would think they would have a database for this, right? That would be helpful, and massively convenient for our purposes. Yeah, but can't life just be easy for once? Anyways, did you know that in America there's about 6 million people who die from car accidents? Yeah, but we're in Canada, so that stat has to be different. I uh, wouldn't be by that much. What's that? Uh, hmm. It's a report from November, 19 years ago? Huh, that's weird. Yeah. How did a, how, how did a woman drown in an accident that happened nowhere near water? Hmm. Can you, can you pull up the original report? Yeah, of course. Here you go, I got it. So, Camilla Davenport and her daughter Mallory, they swerved to avoid a deer and they wound up going inside a ditch. They both survived, but the Emmy said that Mrs. Davenport should have survived as well. There was apparently a puddle of fluid inside the car, which she somehow mm -hmm. drowned in? That's why they launched an investigation, but no one was able to be prosecuted. This article that I just found said that the small town that they lived in turned against the girl because they all thought that she had killed her mom. But a few months later she went missing and everyone thought it was a dad but they couldn't prove it. 
Hmm. So clearly we've got the wrong person, unless she ran away or something like that. I guess. And then she stole this other person's ID to protect herself. But yeah. she caught on that Steph wanted to leave, so she killed him. Hmm. Sounds like abandonment issues to me. Gabby, what are you talking about? It's not your fault, it's hers. But if I had said anything, he might still be... No, no, no. We don't know that. She might have still killed him anyways. So it's not your fault, it's hers. How are we ever gonna find any actual evidence on her? I mean, we can try getting her an identity theft, but I don't think uh, any of these evidence would really sway the cops to do anything. Maybe she left the murder weapon at his house or something else incriminating? I highly doubt that, that because um, the cops, they would have found it by now, right? Maybe not. Come with me. Hmm? What? So, uh... This is the place, huh? Why, why'd you never take me here? Because my brother didn't like you and we broke up before he even bought the place. <laughs> That's a shame, ain't it? His loss. Alright, let's go. instead of the lights in the house. Mallory? Failed. Again? That won't do. That won't do at all. You're sorry? Well, what good does that do me? We're bringing her back whether or not you want to. My patience is wearing thin, girl. Meet me at the house. <laughs> 